In last week's episode, a discovery was made. Time to put some thermal paste onto this nozzle. Well, what is that? A clone of a Bontex CHT nozzle? I've not even seen one of these before. We're gonna have to test this. And so we shall in this video. I implore you to watch all the way with this one because the results I got back were not at all what I was expecting here, and it took me a while to figure out what was going on. Last week, I put together the cheapest Voron V0 kit you can currently buy, and it came with a little surprise in it. A brass nozzle with three holes at the inlet, aka a Bontech CHT clone. I posted some macro photos of the nozzle on Twitter and Instagram before that video went up, and folks were commenting on the absolute wall of brass. It just seems like filament is gonna slam into it. Last week, I only had time to do a single flawed flow rate test. This week, I have time for a whole bunch of flawed flow rate tests. Let's get one really important thing out of the way. My name is not Stefan. This isn't CNC Kitchen. I am Alan Mandic, Mandic really, and I have major unmedicated ADD. Unless you count my only vice as self-medication. The reason I'm telling you any of this is one for a joke and B because this is not a double blind scientific study. That said, I'm not only going to provide you my conclusions and the data that I was able to produce through my testing, but I'm going to share you what test I ran, how I ran it. I'm going to provide you with the STLs and the G codes so you could run this for yourself and test it out, see how it works for you. Let's start off by talking about the equipment we are using in this video. As always, there are timestamps down below if you want to jump around. I used two Voron V0s here. The budget kit one that started this whole thing. In here is a clone of an E3D V6 hot end. It has an aluminum heater block with a 50 watt heater cartridge in it and a bimetallic heat break. The direct drive extruder assembly that is feeding filament here is the mini afterburner from the Voron design team, which has Bontech BMG gears inside of it. The other point one is my self-sourced build that has a Fadish Dragon high flow variant hot end in it with a coated copper heater block and a 40 watt heater cartridge. The extruder that's feeding the Dragon is a Bontech LGX Lite. These are two very different machines built on the same platform. Realistically, the only other hardware at play is nozzles for this project. We're gonna be using 3.4 millimeter nozzles a genuine E3D V6, just plain RepRap style nozzle with a straight through filament path, that knockoff kind of CHT clone, and then a genuine Bontech CHT nozzle. With the hardware in place, it's time to get to the actual testing. Now, I ran one flow rate test in the last video. It was a file that I downloaded off of principles. I wasn't really happy with it, and it wasn't gonna work for what I wanted. So I jumped into Fusion 360 and created my own racetrack design. Of course, I did not create this concept. I just created the specific geometry to fit the build volume of a Voron V0. The goal with this design is to keep the print head moving in a straight line as long as you can, so it has a chance to fully accelerate and really achieve its maximum flow. When it comes to slicing and setting up a print like this, unfortunately, there's no button in your slicer. It's just gonna add the changes you need to the print to make this work. It's gonna get fairly complicated from here on out. So I've included a link in the description down below, not only to this STL for this design, but also to the actual G code that I used for my testing. So if you want to run on your machine and see how it goes, you can do that. That's at your own risk as I slice that for these Voron B zeros. So if you apply this in another situation, that is on you. Armed with this STL, it was time to head into the slicer and set up the base parameters that we're gonna build off of for all of our testing moving forward. Here's a list of the settings I used for this. Just to give you a quick little breakdown, vase mode is so that the print can just keep on running and not having to pause for retractions and layer changes. It just spirals its way up, which allows it to achieve higher maximums. 0.3 millimeter layer height is 75% of my nozzle diameter, which is generally the recommended limit for a nozzle size. The part cooling on a Voron V0 is not the greatest, so I chose to use Polymaker ASA, as it's a material I work with very often, and it won't require as much cooling for those low layer times we're gonna run into the faster we print. And lastly, I set the entire print to 30 millimeter a second print speed, but I didn't do any speed changes in the slicer because unfortunately, there's not a good way to do that for testing like this at this moment. So I had to dive into the G code and create the file for this project that I wanted manually. I started with a set velocity limit command in the start G code so that Clipper would know to raise its software limits so that the acceleration and speed limits were not going to hold us back for this testing. 
Then it was time for the real tofu and potatoes of this project, actually changing the speed consistently at different heights. I used an M220 command inserted every five millimeters through the G code to tell the firmware to speed up by whatever percentage I put in the S value after M220. So at the first five millimeters, I inserted M220 S200. So I doubled the speed from 30 millimeters per second to 60 millimeters per second at that first change of speed. From every subsequent five millimeters after that, I only went up 50% of speed, 250, 300, all the way up to 1200% at the end of this test. The reason I chose 30 millimeters per second and only to go by 50% steps was so I could get really fine steps in my results and get more accurate readings. It's not a linear change in flow rate when you make these speed increases, but it averaged between one to three millimeters cubed per second in volumetric flow rate increase per increase in speed. Let's step back and have a moment of realness here. If anything I just said sounds a little confusing, think about having a brain that wants to jump around to a million topics at once. How am I gonna design that part for that next big project build? What was it Ruby told me to do in the house? What am I gonna have for lunch? And then remember to add 50 to the last value you put into the G code. Oh wait, what was it I put in the G code? 350 or 400? Let me go back and check. Oh, it was 400, now I need to put in 450. That's the way this process went for me. This is not in any way me complaining. I love what I do and I found a workflow that kind of works for me. I just wanted to give you some reality rather than just a polished video with no stumbling blocks in it. That's all. So let's get to the testing. Starting off, I set up the budget V0 and hit print, only to have the latch on the mini afterburner extruder pop off and stop extruding. I'm not a fan of the mini afterburner and I will be installing a mini after Sherpa on this thing very soon. Once I slapped a zip tie onto that latch, we were off to the races printing again and again and again. You get the point. Now I ran the same G-code on all of my testing between both machines, exactly the same. When it came time to change nozzles, I'd remove filament, remove the nozzle, put a little bit of fresh slice engineering thermal paste onto the nozzle that was going in, install it, heat things up, do a hot tighten, and then back to testing. Round and round, these rats rapidly raced to return results. Disclaimer! The flow rate numbers I'm about to present to you are slicer estimates based off of averages of the results from the prints I got here. I don't have a gigantic sample size. I don't have a bunch of machines to be testing against. So this could absolutely be a deeper study. I would love to hear it if any of you have input on how I can improve results for future testing, or if you wanna repeat these tests for yourself and see what results you get, I'd love to hear from you about that. Basically take these results with a grain of salt. However, there's definitely a distinct variation between these results that's hard to argue with. I started with the budget V0 with its basic hot end. I printed these tests three times with each of the three nozzles so I could get some averages for my results. What I was looking for is the point in the perimeter where the hot end, the extruder, can no longer keep up extruding plastic and there will be gaps in the wall. I then took these models, I measured up from the base with a set of calipers to the point of failure, noted it and moved on. And surprising absolutely nobody, here are our results. With the basic V6 clone hot end, the CHT nozzle is the clear far and away winner at somewhere around 30 cubic millimeters per second, which honestly is kind of mind blowing on such a basic hot end to me. Even the E3D nozzle was putting in a respectable number here, but you'll notice coming up the rear is that clone of the CHT nozzle. Apparently from these results, that wall of brass is absolutely restricting flow through this nozzle. But we're not done here. It's restricting it on this hot end. What about the Dragon hot end? When it came to testing with the Dragon Equip V0, I ran the same G code as the other machine. I also ran three tests on the three nozzles, but the results were nothing like I expected. Taking a look at the chart, sure, the CHT nozzle is still the winner, but that knockoff is right on its heels. This is a complete comeback kid moment compared to use in the budget Voron machine. And the E3D V6 nozzle is coming up the rear. But why in the heck is this budget nozzle working so much better in this quality hot end? I puzzled over this for a while and it finally just clicked in my head while I was laying in bed yesterday morning. Why? Doesn't make any sense. Why would it flow better on the Dragon High? It's a dragon high flow. Yeah, for those unfamiliar, the way that the Fatus Dragon achieves high flow isn't by using a longer nozzle like a volcano type hot end. It has an insulated heat break that has a longer section to just kind of pre-melt the filament before it gets to the nozzle. See where I'm going with this? 
This knockoff nozzle may have that wall of brass in the middle of it, but it still has the three divided up passages to transfer heat into the filament better once it gets into those passages. If it's already partially molten, as it will be in a Dragon High Flow hot end, then it can actually do its job pretty well. Of course, in a regular V6 style hot end like that budget kit is coming with, the filament doesn't melt until it gets into the heater block just before the nozzle. It doesn't have time to melt enough to not just slam into that wall of brass in this nozzle, restricting flow. This is purely supposition on my part, but I think they included this nozzle because they knew they included a very basic hot end in this kit and they thought that this nozzle would increase the flow to make up for that fact. In reality, my testing anyway shows that they would have been better off just putting a quality V6 nozzle in the thing. It really feels like the death nail to this design is the wall of brass in the middle of it. I can't decide if chucking it up in a lathe and center drilling it and just giving it a dish would help things or would maybe countersinking each of the individual three holes so they come to more of a point in the middle make things better. This video has already taken a lot longer than I wanted it to, but uh for science? The second I uttered those words, I realized my comments were going to be full of people telling me I should have modified and or cut this thing open. So I'm attacking it. I grabbed a lighter to burn out some old filament and pick it out of there. Then I grabbed a drill bit to go ahead and hog out the holes just a little bit so I could see better what I'm doing. I decided to go with a countersink bit and countersink the openings of the passages to try and create the more sharp center point of the regular CHT nozzle. This will have an unintended consequence of creating like a shelf right between the heat break and the nozzle, but there's nothing I can really do about that. And I don't really care. With that done under the macro lens, here is what it looks like closer to a CHT nozzle, not nearly as sharp or steep of an angle as that has, but let's see what it can do on the printer. I only ran one test with the modified nozzle, but sure enough, adding it to the chart, you can see it in fact improved. Still not up to a CHT level, but a heck of a lot better. Despite the fact that I've already modified this, I don't want to cut this nozzle open because it's the only one I have, and maybe I'll get some more of them to play with later on. But it's very clear to me that if they'd just gone one step further with making this nozzle, it would actually do what it's supposed to do. That all just highlighted exactly what I mean by the way my brain works. I wanted this video done yesterday, and I offhandedly make a comment about modifying the nozzle. Before you know it, I've got power tools out and running yet another test. I love my job, just maybe not myself so much sometimes. I know there's some of you out there probably yelling at the screen right now or have already left me comments, thanks for the engagement by the way, saying, well that's an inaccurate flow rate test because it might be under extruding before the failure point and it almost certainly is. Likely the wall thickness is thinning out. We're not reaching the 0.45 millimeter that we should be right before the failure point. And it could be many millimeters below the actual failure that I'm measuring to that that is occurring. But testing for that specifically would be a very in-depth process. And I still feel that I presented some decent data here, some information that can directly compare these nozzles against each other in two different hot end applications. For me personally, I'm gonna take the data I collected I'm not gonna go right to the maximum amount. I might work my way up toward it and do some testing, but I can already see that say my Dragon hot end is flowing quite a bit more than I actually realized it was and I'm under utilizing that thing. I would by no means recommend this nozzle, but I can't even provide you a link if you wanted to play around with it because I haven't been able to find it from any resellers at this point. Some exist with like a copper slug and three passages in the middle of them, but this particular nozzle, the only place I've seen it is in the kit to build this boron. Projects like this almost always end up taking more time and testing than I expect going into them. So if you want to help support future projects, please consider checking out patreon.com slash to directly support this content. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please drop it a like. It really helps out. Let me know in the comments. Did you find this information valuable? You're going to run these tests for yourself. Remember, you can find the link to these files in the description down below. Get subscribed to keep up to date with all the future content and to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt.